Today I used the wiring diagram to repair the GE dryer. It's much easier than you think. This is a GE dryer wiring diagram. If your dryer won't start or won't stay on after you press the start button, you need to check the circuit related with the motor. So this is the motor circuit. So this is the line one They go through first to the control timer and then pass the high limit and then go through the start switch and then go through the motor, the start and the run. And this is a built in the motor built in overload and then pass through the door switch and go to the neutral. So any component in this circuit, if uh, something wrong, the motor won't start. And uh, also pay attention to the wire number, the color here. So you can see the line wire go into the control timer is red, out of the timer is the brown. And then here is a red, and uh, back to the neutral is white. So when we use the multimeter to connect, you need a wire color and the terminal numbers to check the component. For any appliances repair, the first things I will check the voltage. For dryer, you need to check the line voltage. It's a 240, and the line to the neutral it's 120. If it's not, you need to check your service panel to check the circuit breaker or fuse. First, take off the four mounting screw for the control panel on the top of the dryer. After that, open the door. You can see two long screws there mounting the top panel. Remove the two long screws. And then lift up the top panel and uh, wiggling a little bit, about uh, 20 degrees, and uh, gradually take it out. And then flip over the control panel upside down. First, check the high limit. The right wire go to the timer, terminal B, and then out from terminal C, the brown wire go to the high limit. You can see here, the timer, terminal B, is the right wire, that's the line voltage, and then terminal C is the brown wire. The brown wire is going to the high limit. Back look at the drawing. You see the high limit right. That means this component is located on the right hand side of the dryer. From the drawing, you can see the other side of the high limit switch, the brown wire, connect to the start switch. Use meter to check the high limit. You can see the reading from open to close. So high limit is good. Next, I'm going to check the start switch. I move the meter probe from the brown wire to the red wire at the switch. I connect the probe to the red wire at the start switch. And then I Turn on the start button and the reading from open to close. Start switch is good. Next, I'm going to check the motor and the door switch. I put the probe of the meter at the start switch terminal right wire. Another one at the neutral right wire. So this circuit including the door switch and the motor winding. One probe of the meter hook up the right wire 
at uh, start switch terminal. The other one hook up to the white wire, the neutral wire. You see right now the reading is open. After I close the door, the reading should be only the motor winding. This track approved the door switch is working. Next I'm going to hook up the power to check the timer. I used the electricity tester to check the right wire has a power and the brown wire has a power too. So the timer is working. Look at the drawing here. The right wire from the line wire and the brown wire after the timer. So the timer closed right now. Next, I'm going to start dryer to see if the motor is running. Yeah, the motor is a spin. The drum is running, but when I release the start switch, the motor stop. Let's back to the drawing to see the motor control circuit. After you press the start switch, motor is running. After motor running, the motor switch should be closed. Yes, closed down here. And then the current will go through the idler spring switch and the motor switch and back to the motor run, make the circuit. If you release the start switch, motor stop, the problem either the idler spring switch or the motor switch. I'm going to remove the front panel and the drum to check. Remove the two mounting screws and then open the front panel 10 degrees, 15 degrees, and lift it up. Gently put it aside because there's a door switch wire there. Take these two screws off. You can slightly widen the side panel for easy to get the drum out. Next, I will take off the drum belt. First, I pull the idler towards the camera, lose the tension, and take the belt off the idler and then you have the room to take the belt off the motor shaft. Use the belt to gently take the drum out of the dryer. I have to slightly open the side panel, make it easy to get out. Sure enough, you can see one wire off the idler springs limit the switch. Even the female spade connector is missing. Next, I will check the switch if it's working. You can see when I gave us tension, it closed. The switch is good. I stripped a wire and use female spade connector, put it in and use the crimper to crimp it. And then put the connector back to the switch terminal. I take this opportunity to use vacuum to clean the dryer inside. At the bottom there, uh, to clean the lint. Also, I cleaned the heating pan there. And including the blower. Hold the drum belt. Gently put the drum back into the dryer. You have to line the drum bushing of the shaft into the hole on the heating pan there. And then in the reverse order, put the belt back on the motor shaft and the idler wheel. Tighten both sides screw 
on the side panel. Take the front panel, put it back on. Pay attention, there's a two thumb on the front panel. You have to insert that two thumbs into the slot on the side panels. And then tighten the two screws. Now I have a test run. I press the door switch lever down and then turn the start knob. Yeah, the drum is running. Even I release the start switch. Next I put the top cover back on, slide in, push it down. And then tighten the two long screw from the door. If you like this video, please hit the like button and the subscribe. I have a final test run. Close the door and uh, turn the start knob. Yeah, it's moving and it's hot. See you next time.